Hello, good afternoon, students. I hope you, you all are fine. Well, uh, today we are going to talk about telephone, which is to make a phone call. The following points are what we are going to discuss. We have, for example, uh, lecture de dialogue, parler au téléphone, appeler quelqu'un, demander le nom de celui qui appelle. Si la personne que vous appelez est, à, est présente, si la personne que vous appelez est absente, exemple d'appel téléphonique, pronom COD et COI. Cinq exercices. So we are going to read the following about uh, how to make phone calls, which are reading of a few dialogue to make a phone call. When you call the person, the person is present, what do you say? When the person is also absent, what do you say? And we look at a few grammar aspects of uh, direct objects and direct, indirect objects. Let's start with the dialogue. Lecture de dialogue. Dialogue 1 et 2. Donc, je fais la lecture du dialogue 1 entre Julien et Nelly. Allô, Nelly? C'est Julien. Je peux parler à Bernard? Ne quitte pas. Je te l'appelle. Bonjour, Bernard. On va au stade samedi à 15h. Avec plaisir, Julien. Dialogue 2. Allô, bonjour madame. Je peux parler à Dr. Colin? Désolé, il n'est pas là. Vous voulez laisser un message? Sinon, rappelez à 14h. Merci. Ce n'est pas urgent, je vais rappeler. À bientôt, monsieur. À bientôt, madame. So these are a few dialogues that we have read and the dialogue says how to call somebody. If you call the person, the person is present. You engage. If the person is not in, sometimes what do you do? You either leave a message or you call back. So these are all that the conversation is about. In our next dialogue, I mean next lessons, we are going to deal with a few other expressions regarding phone calls. How do you make phone calls in French? We say, Allô? Je veux parler à. You read after me, please. Allô? Je peux parler à. Allô? Est-ce que je peux parler à? Allô? Vous pouvez me passer. Then you add the name. Ok? Vous ajoutez le nom de la personne à qui vous voulez parler. Exemple. Allô? Je peux parler à Justin. À Justine. Which is, hello, can I speak to Justine? Second sentence. Hello, est-ce que je peux parler au PDG? Which is, hello, can I speak to the CEO? Demandez le nom de la personne qui appelle. When somebody calls you and you don't have his phone number stored on your phone or if he, the fellow is using a line line, you may want to know who is calling, accent of the name. But you don't say, comment tu t'appelles? No. You say simplement, uh, à qui je l'honneur? Or, ton nom, s'il te plaît. Votre nom, s'il vous plaît. And here we the ton nom, when you are dealing with a peer, okay? Of the same generation, the same group of age. Now, when it's an elderly person, or you go to somebody calling from a, a high office, ne you de vous, okay? Votre nom, s'il vous plaît. Si la personne que vous appelez est présente, so when the person that you are calling is uh, present, what do you say? Probably it's a phone you call and uh, somebody else pick it. Apart from the person you want to speak to, somebody else pick it. So the person may ask you to hold on. And how do you say that? Ne quittez pas, je vous le passe. Ne quittez pas, or ne quitte pas, je te l'appelle. Un instant, Je vous la passe. Which is, hold on, I'm calling him or her for you. Si la personne que vous appelez est absente, obviously, when the person that you are calling is not in, you may either want to leave a message or call back. So, these are what goes into, you have three, par, uh, three uh, columns here. The first one, deal with the people you want to speak to, and then also pronouns. For instance, we have, il, Elle, 
Kofi, Ama, le PDG, or it can be any other person at all that you intend to talk to. And if the person is not in, you can say, il n'est pas là, or elle n'est pas là. For example, you want, to, you want to speak to Kofi, but Kofi is not around. So what do they say? The person that picks the phone will tell you, Kofi n'est pas là. Okay, if it is Ama that you want to speak to, the fellow will reply by saying, Ama n'est pas là. Okay, now, they may either ask you to leave a message or call back. And here are the following expressions. Vous voulez laisser un message, s'il vous plaît? Tu veux laisser un message? Vous pouvez rappeler? Tu peux rappeler? Veuillez rappeler plus tard. So these are any of the expressions that you may want to use. Just to say, call back later or you, you ask if the person may want to leave a message. Example, on an exam d'appel téléphonique. So example of uh, phone calls. Example one, donc un. When the person you are calling is present. Allô, bonjour. Est-ce que Julie est là? Oui, ne quittez pas. Je vous la passe. Julie, quelqu'un veut te parler au téléphone. Example 2, which is example 2. Allô, bonjour. Je veux parler à Jean. Désolé, il n'est pas là. Vous voulez laisser un message ou rappeler plus tard? Ce n'est pas urgent. Je rappelle plus tard. Merci. Exercice 1. Through a phone conversation, you invite your friend to a cinema, a restaurant, church or a, to a party. Write a dialogue in French. Indicate the time, the day, and the venue. So this is a normal phone conversation. As you're inviting somebody, you've already done the topic, how to invite somebody, the person may accept or reject it. This time around, it will not be a written one, but it will be through a phone call. So obviously, your exercise may start with, hello. Then the conversation starts. To make it nice, let the person, uh, what you propose, the person can first refuse it. Then later you propose another thing for the person to accept it at a convenient time that the person may wish to, you know, honor your invitation. Thank you. So we are going to continue with the le complement objet. You know, when you make a call and uh, the fellow asks you to hold on, I'm calling him or her for you. Or I'm Invite, I'm inviting him to come and speak to you or I will draw his attention that uh, he has a call or she has a call. So how do you do that aspect in terms of grammar? So in grammar, for instance, we have uh, what you call in French, le complément objet. Donc on a le complément objet direct et le complément objet indirect. Pour ce qui est de complément objet direct, vous avez par exemple le numéro A. Le numéro A, on a deux exemples. Le premier exemple, c'est « Je vois Henri ». Et le second exemple, le second exemple on a « Les enfants regardent la télévision ». So the first example is « I can see Henry ». And the second is « The children are watching television ». So Henry and then television are what you call « complement ». Okay, they add to the verb to make it a meaningful, you know, idea or sentence. When you look at the example B, B, which is complement object indirect, we have three examples. Un, maman parle à Henri. Deux, maman parle à ses enfants. Trois, Ama parle de Daina. Okay? Donc, uh, here we have three examples which all talk about the, the indirect objects. And when we compare the example in uh, B, to example in A, you realize that after the verb for the B, there is always a preposition which is in the color blue. And those prepositions are close to the verb that are also in yellow. Now we added we add the object which is Henry, ses enfants, then Dinah. Now the reason why we have the indirect objects in the second column is that after the verb, we have a preposition. So it means the object is introduced through a preposition. Okay, so I will explain it in French now. You have Mama parle Henri, 
maman parle à ses enfants et ma ama parle à ama parle de Daina. Donc pour le complément objet direct, euh, l'objet est directement lié au verbe, c'est-à-dire euh, c'est à côté du verbe. Par exemple, je vois Henri. Je vois qui Je vois Henri. Les enfants regardent la télévision. Les enfants regardent quoi La télévision. Ok Donc on a le complément objet qui est directement lié au verbe. C'est ce pourquoi on dit complément objet direct. Cependant, si vous avez le complément objet indirect, souvent le complément objet est séparé du verbe à l'intermédiaire d'une euh, préposition. Par exemple, on a un « maman parle à Henri ». Exemple 2, on a « maman parle à ses enfants ». Et exemple 3, on a « ama parle de Daina ». Donc, dans tous ces trois exemples, vous avez le complément objet indirect. Le premier étant Henri, le second, ses enfants, et enfin, Dana sont tous les trois séparés du verbe « parle » par l'usage d'une préposition. Voilà. Alors, donc, on, a, on doit aussi voir le complément objet indirect. Donc, pour le complément objet indirect, on a « le »,« la »,« elle »,« apostrophe » et « les ». Donc, le « le » remplace le complément objet euh, direct masculin, la remplace le complément objet direct féminin et le l apostrophe est utilisé lorsque le pronom est suivi d'un verbe commençant par une voyelle. Et le pluriel de le, la ou l apostrophe c'est les. Ok, I'm taking it in English. Uh, we have the direct object pronoun which are le, la, l apostrophe and les. The le représente uh, direct object masculine and the la représente direct object féminin. And their plural is le. Nevertheless, when the le or la is fully a verb starting with a vowel, we cancel the e of the le or the la of the l, and then you put the l apostrophe there. For example, we have uh, tu tu vends cette robe, tu vends cette robe. He say oui, je la vends. Okay. Tu manges le pain. Oui, je le mange. Okay. Because le pain is masculine. Tu veux ces cahiers? Do you want these exercise books? Because they are plural, then you can see the answer become Oui, je les veux. Yes, I want them. Now let's come to the indirect object pronouns. There are two, the lui and the leur. Lui for singular, direct, indirect object, and the leur for plural, indirect object. Example, in the example two, we have one, à ma parle aux enfants, Then it becomes enfant is plural, okay? Ama is speaking to the children, so children being in plural, the pronoun that replaces children is le. Example, elle le parle. Mama parle à Justine, mom is speaking to Justine. Justine being singular, feminine, we use the lui to replace, you know, Justine. When we are rewriting the sentence without Justine, it becomes mama lui parle, okay? So now let's do, let's do a recap. Les pronoms complément objet direct. On a le, la, elle, apostrophe et les. Donc le ou elle, apostrophe pour, pour masculin singulier. La, elle, apostrophe féminin singulier. Et le pluriel, c'est les. Les pronoms complément objet indirect. On a lui et leur. Pour masculin and feminine singular we have lui and also for masculine and feminine plural we have le so this is the recap bear in mind that we have direct object and their pronouns and we also have indirect objects and their pronouns and know in the sentence which one you are supposed to use at appropriate time be very careful with this that's why i have this table If you have any doubt, come back to the table to check and make sure you do the writing. Remarks. The remark concerned in a sentence, which of the COD or the COE comes first? Okay. La place de la, des pronoms COD et COI dans la phrase. Le pronom COD ou le pronom COI se place entre le sujet et le verbe. So be it direct object or indirect object, It is always placed in between the subject and the verb. For example, we have example A, which is example A. Je connais Ama. Have you seen? I know Ama. Je la connais. Okay. Je connais Ama. Je la connais. 
So you can see the la is played between the je and then connect, which is subject and verb. J'invite Kofi au cinéma. So Kofi is a masculine. J'invite and invite is a verb start with a vowel. For, so you see the pronoun which is le, we have to remove the e and make it a l apostrophe. That is je l'invite au cinéma. Okay. Ama parle à Christine. Christine is feminine singular. So indirect object it become lui. And for that matter, ama lui parle. So you can see that either uh, direct object l apostrophe or indirect object indirect pro, uh, object the pronoun being lui both l apostrophe and then the lui are placed between the subject and the verb quand la phrase comporte le cod et le coi le pronoun cod précède le pronoun coi when in one sentence we have the two cod uh, we have the two complement objects, direct, direct and the indir indirect. Then, you in writing the sentence, the direct object comes first before the indirect object. Example: Je donne un stylo à Ama. It becomes: Je le lui donne. Je donne quoi? What am I giving to Ama? A stylo, a, a pen. So to who? To Ama, which is indirect object. And for that matter, it becomes: Je le lui donne. Exercise 2. Réécrivez ces phrases suivantes en remplaçant le COD ou le COI par le pronom qui convient. So you are going to rewrite the following sentences again by uh, replacing the direct object or the indirect object with the appropriate pronoun. Je ferai mon devoir ce soir. Nous voyons les enfants. Le professeur parle à l'assemblée. Ce matin, j'ai écrit une lettre à mes parents. So you have to rewrite those and these four sentences again, replacing the direct object which are underlined here with the, the correct or the appropriate pronoun. 5. Il faut attendre les invités avant de commencer. Okay. So the exercise to continue with number 6. Prends le livre et les par terre. Achète la télévision avant de voyager. Raconte l'histoire à maman. So, raconte l'histoire à maman. Tell the story to mom or to mother. J'achète un cadeau à mes, à mes frères. I buy a gift for my brother, my brothers. Explique la leçon à tes amis. Okay, so, you have 10 sentences which all have direct object and indirect objects. Some of them only direct object or some of them only indirect objects. Some of them you have two. So you have to know how to do it. Refer to the lesson notes that we have just done. Réponse, here are the answers for number one. Je le ferai ce soir. Nous le voyons. Le professeur lui parle. Ce matin, Je la leur écris. Il faut les attendre avant de commencer. Prends-le, il est par terre. Achète-la avant de voyager. Raconte-la lui. Je le leur acheterai. Explique-la leur. So that ends this exercise. We are done for this lesson. Thank you for coming and see you another day. Au revoir.